How did it know? How did my phone know to like wake up? It's Bluetooth. I mean, that's the secret. And I, Bluetooth is like really the only option. And I'll explain why. But presence detection. Look, if we're going to build the AI hotel from Altered Carbon, we got to start somewhere, right? You got to have the foundational bedrocks. And Bluetooth is kind of the foundational bedrock of presence detection because we're not quite there yet with like the Chinese surveillance style facial recognition. Although we're going to have a video on that, setting up your own home surveillance thing in a couple of weeks. So <laughs> with cameras and not the cloud, not the cloud. You should know by now if you're watching this channel, not the cloud. But it turns out that you can use Raspberry Pi Zero W, it's got to have the wireless, uh, to do Bluetooth presence detection. Pretty much everybody carries a phone that already has Bluetooth. So if you want to do home automation with Bluetooth, Raspberry Pi Zero with the Bluetooth detection script that I'm going to show you, it's pretty much what you do. <laughs> I'm at the lectern here. Let's go, let's go to my desk. Let's sit down. Let's talk about it there. Bluetooth presence detection. I do have the Tesla V100s, multiple Tesla V100s, in order to do real-time image analysis, 1080p security camera uh, video analysis, in fact. That's gonna have to wait for another day. I've got to, got some undergrad students slaving away hard on the video recognition, like the real-time video feed, and whew, those Tesla V100s, they get kind of toasty. 32 gigs of VRAM, there's not quite enough CPU horsepower. It goes better in silicon, there are security cameras out there that have silicon in it to do face recognition. Funny enough, they come from China. But this, Raspberry Pi Zero, that's all. I mean, if this is your first Raspberry Pi Zero project or your first Raspberry Pi project, this maybe is not the best first project to start with. There's some really great stuff on the Adafruit website. There's some stuff on the Level 1 forum. But if you want to dive right in, you can definitely do it with the Raspberry Pi Zero. Now, the one that my phone is tied to is the machine that you see behind me, that one right there. So, I mean, it's a full Linux box. It's pretty easy to get started with one of these. I mean, step one, you configure your Raspberry Pi. And in case you don't know, uh, you can download a Raspberry Pi image. We're using Raspbian. It's a version of Debian for the Raspberry Pi because Raspberry Pi, I mean, everything's gotta be a pun, right? Um, the easiest thing to do, I, you gotta enable SSH. Well, you don't gotta, but it's easier if you do. And it's also easier to set up your wireless network on your Raspberry Pi uh, before, like, at the time of imaging. So if you're on Windows, you can use something like Etcher and etch your Raspberry Pi image. And there's a full guide on the Level 1 forum. So check that out. It's step-by-step -step for what you need to do. But you'll create an empty file called SSH. doesn't have an extension. I should accept SSH.txt. That makes things needlessly complicated for people on other on other distros, but just create an empty file called SSH that will enable SSH on this. And then you can create a file called WPA underscore up supplicant dot conf. And there's a configuration in there that you can copy paste. You'll put your wireless network name and the password for your wireless network. So hopefully you didn't make your wireless network something absurd with a lot of spaces or is overly complicated. I mean, FBI surveillance van is not really super hard to type in, but if you got an elite speak or something that has extra spaces or hard to type characters, well, you've just punished yourself. Once you've done that, boot up this thing. You should get, if you've got a, you know, HDMI hooked up to it, you're going to get output. that's like, Hey, I'm going to resize the root partition, just standard stuff. Before you do anything, you want to do apt update and apt upgrade and then apt dist upgrade and make sure these things are fully up to date. Now, at the time that I happened to do this, there was a problem with one of the packages. So there's a troubleshooting section on the level one forum as well. So when you apt install PI-Bluetooth, it's gonna install all the Raspberry Pi Bluetooth stuff. If you run into problems, then uh, you should see the troubleshooting section. So the way this works, the way this home automation stuff works is the Bluetooth part here is really only one ingredient. The Bluetooth thing is gonna generate messages for another system that stuff is happening. So like if you have a home alarm system and on the alarm panel, uh, you've got the thing that's like, hey, the door number two is open or there's motion in the basement. Uh, those sensors are 
wired up to a control panel and then if as the sensor open and closes stuff happens in the control panel well there's a protocol called mqtt that is designed for internet of things type events like that and so you could tie in a whole bunch of things like you know your heater has kicked on or off your air conditioner has kicked on or off or your electric meter is using this much power or your raspberry pi has detected your phone's bluetooth mac address whatever it happens to be so or you know your phone is paired with your raspberry pi and uh it's you know gone by the raspberry pi and it's like oh the phone i just saw the phone's mac address go by because it was looking for my mac address so you can sort of <laughs> there's a lot of wireless stuff floating around your on your network and you can turn that into an events based system with mqtt so there's a really cool library called mosquito mo but it's not spelled exactly like mosquito and so you'll want to apt install that and then the very last thing is there's a shell script called monitor and you'll set up monitor and so what monitor does is actually look for bluetooth beacons or bluetooth devices that you pair with this or that you don't pair with this. Now, the thing you gotta understand about how this works is that if you've got a, a bunch of Bluetooth devices or a bunch of wireless devices in general, and this is why Bluetooth works so much better than say Wi-Fi or something like that. If you've got a phone that's uh, conserving power, what actually happens is the phone will hop on Wi-Fi, do what it needs to do, and then it'll turn the Wi-Fi off. So if you're doing presence detection based on whether or not you're phone is active on Wi-Fi, you either have to have Wi-Fi on all the time, which is hard on your battery, or, uh, you know, not rely on Wi-Fi because when your phone turns Wi-Fi off, it's hard to tell the difference between that and you actually leaving your house. Sometimes uh, GPS, like some people say GPS maybe is a good idea. GPS isn't a good idea because it can't tell the difference between you at your house and like you in your yard or you walking your pet or something like that. This, trust me, Bluetooth low energy is probably the best way to do it, but you don't have to get expensive fobs. You don't have to get an expensive system. You can literally just do it with $10 Raspberry Pi Zero, Raspberry Pi Zero Ws, $12, $15, whatever, whatever it happens to be where you are. So the monitor script is the next part of the equation here that will generate those MQTT events and submit them to your event server. So you can pair your phone or, uh, you know, just scan for it or, um, whatever you want to do in order to get this set up to be able to do stuff. Now, a typical layout with Raspberry Pi Zeros, like if your house has like a basement and an upper floor, you might put one on each floor. If your house is a particularly long house, you might put one at each end of your house. Uh, for me, I put one in the lamp at the end of my driveway. So at the end of my driveway, I've got a, a lamp post that had an electrical box on the bottom so that you could plug in like an electric weed eater or whatever. Uh, and then a, a lamp and you can turn it, the lamp on and off from the house. So I just put a smart light bulb in it, turn it on and it's just on all the time. And the Raspberry Pi Zero has a wireless connection, just, you know, 802.11 ethernet um, back to the house. And it's, it's actually on a different subnet so that it's not, it's a little more isolated from the internet. That subnet can get on the internet, but the traffic is restricted. And so when I get close to the lamp post at the end of my driveway, the lights can come on because the Raspberry Pi Zero sees me and is like, oh, I know what that, I seen, <laughs> I know what that Bluetooth Mac address is. Or my phone's like, hey, let me connect with pairing. Bluetooth is a little bit of a black magic. And so that event is sent over Wi-Fi to say, hey, probably need to open the garage or turn the lights on if it's after dark. Um, some people have fairly elaborate setups with another thing called if this, then that. So depending on what your setup is, you could tie in if this, then that with this setup, but that's gonna be a subject for another day. I'm sort of curious, like DIY home automation, I think is the future. And at level one, I kind of think we could put together like the commandments of internet of things. And it's like no cloud, or at least it has to work without the cloud. The cloud has to be entirely optional because you can't trust anything to protect your privacy. Anything that you buy, any like, you know, Facebook portal or Nest or any other Internet of Things device, it is not going to respect your privacy. This, this does. Only this knows your MAC address. It doesn't report anything to the internet. It doesn't have to phone home. Nothing magical has to happen. All this traffic of like stuff happening, it stays entirely on your local network. We are gonna have a video in a couple of weeks on setting up your own surveillance system, your own video surveillance system, because 
hey, if China can be like, that's a 40 year old dude that's walking across my yard or fiddling with the garage door, I could probably have that. We could use AI to monitor what's going on at my house without sending it to the cloud. It doesn't have to be this nest you know, doorbell or the ring doorbell or any of that BS. You can totally do this at home and you don't have to have a Tesla in, in order to do that kind of image analysis. You can literally get, you know, $100, $150 cameras from China that run Linux so you can take control of it. It's at your house and then you can elect to share it. And I think there's a big difference there. So if you want to help put together this kind of thing, philosophy, like the philosophy of the internet of things, or uh, you know, contribute to like the commandments of the Internet of Things things, then come to the Level 1 Forum. I can't wait to do the Ansible thing. The Ansible thing is gonna be awesome. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1. You have got a Raspberry Pi based uh, Bluetooth presence detection. <laughs> if you want advance warning that your mother-in-law is outside, you can totally do it. It's like learn what her phone's Bluetooth MAC address is and this thing can send an alert like, danger, Will Robinson, danger.